Hey, everybody. My guest on today's show is a leading authority on building your business online with podcasts. Tom Schwab is the CEO, and that's Chief Evangelist Officer of Interview Valet. He shares incredible value here. So if you've ever thought about starting a podcast, Tom is dishing out insightful details about how to get started and make it easy. My name is Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. The one thing that I get asked all the time is, how do you achieve success in business and make an impact? In each episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, you'll hear from entrepreneurs and visionaries who share how their leadership has changed not only their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. Hey, could you do me a quick favor? Take a screenshot of this podcast episode right now and post it on your Instagram and tag me and anybody else who you think could benefit from it, especially if you've been finding value. I'm so grateful for you listening. Hey, everybody. Super excited, as always, to bring another fantastic, truly amazing guest to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. Tom, welcome. And I, I've, I've been waiting all week to talk to you because your journey from being in the Navy and really moving through a number of different entrepreneurial journeys, finally, um, you know, being with Interview Valet and a master of podcasts, I, you have so much to share. So with that, please introduce yourself and um, give us a little background on who you are. Well, I, this is not the plan that I had when I graduated from the Naval Academy. You know, my first job <laughs> out of the Navy was running nuclear power plants. And um, in 1992, as the, uh, the economy uh, was changing, you know, the, if you remember, the, the evil empire had collapsed, right? Yeah. I'd done everything that I wanted to in the Navy, um, and I decided I wanted to try something else. And I went into corporate America, and I can always remember my dad calling me a fool. Like, why would you leave a stable job in the Navy? And then I was in the corporate world for a while, and I thought, I'd really like to sell. Right. And uh, when I went to straight commission sales, my dad called me a dang fool or words to that effect, <laughs> right? Because my world up to that point was always um, stability, right? right? Get a good job, get with a good company, stay there forever. And the world has changed. You know, it's continuing to change. And what I looked at is that leading myself, leading my family, my best um, security was my ability to perform. So uh, I went and I sold um, for a major medical device uh, company. Um, then I was in sales and marketing and, you know, the world changes. So I had a distributorship for uh, all of Michigan and just about uh, 2008 as Michigan led the nation into the great recession. Yeah. And the manufacturer said, Hey, we want to go direct and cut out the middleman. And, you know, Emmy, that makes a whole lot of sense. Until you look in the mirror and go, hey, I look like the middleman. Yeah. Now, they did right by us and everything, but uh, we had a sideline business. It was uh, direct-to-patient, durable medical equipment. Now, that sounds really sexy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, we had done it in Michigan, and we were, we were doing well with it. We were doing a lot of good, um, and so uh, I wanted to build that business up. But at that time, I wasn't going to do you know, brick and mortar around the nation. Uh, so I had read a book by two smart guys out of MIT, uh, Brian Halligan and Darmesh Saw. They went on to form uh, HubSpot, which is oh, a, yes. a great company. And they talked about using the internet to attract and engage and delight people, how to um, you know, help people. Uh, and that those companies and those brands that did that would gain the long-term customer. So I read the book and I thought, huh, makes sense. I said, this should work for e-commerce. And no one had tried it up to that point. We were right. uh, HubSpot's original e-commerce case study and uh, built that company up from a regional player to a national leader. And then I started to think that a decade ago, we used to use guest blogs. Uh, you know, Instead of writing a blog on your own site, right. having it seen by three people, put it on somebody else's site. So in 2014, I hypothesized you could do the same thing with podcast interviews. It worked so well that uh, um, I wrote a little book on it. I did an online course 
uh, but I never took the online course out of beta because what people told me is that they understood it. I'd given them the the cookbook. I'd given them the videos, but they didn't want to be the chef. They wanted to be the guest and have us do the rest. So that's where Interview Valet came from. So uh, now, uh, five years later, um, we're a team of 18. We serve about 100 clients at any one time. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of authors, coaches, speakers, brands to really connect their with the people uh, that they're ideal customers uh, so that they can tell their story and, uh, and get known. It's incredible. It's incredible. So what I'm hearing from you too, is the through line is that you've always been able to pivot. Is that true? Yeah. And I don't know if, if pivot is the right word Okay. because to me um, in the Navy, we used to have a phrase, knows right answer when told right? You had to be smart enough to know right answer when told. And I can't say that any of these were ideas that I said, oh, I need to pivot now. It was the market, the the customers telling me, um, you know, people telling me that, hey, this is the next thing. So to me, it's just sort of following, uh, following along. I don't think there's anything revolutionary in the world. It's all evolutionary. One builds on the other. I would totally, totally agree, but I think it takes a unique personality to see that the market's changing and being okay with going in a new direction. So it's always very impressive to me. (laughs) So, So share with us a little bit, you know, you've started Interview Valet, you're growing, you're helping people get connected. Um, What is, if there is one, what is the secret formula to starting a podcast. Well, and I always love when people say, you know, what's the trick or what's the secret formula, right? There's no, there's no secret out there anymore, right? We all, anything on the internet, it's all on the internet. And to me, it's, it's not so much what's the secret, but what's the process, right? So when people came back and said, oh, that was amazing that you could run nuclear power plants at, you know, the age of 20 something. And I'm like, no, what's amazing is that there were smart people to figure out the process and the culture. And all you had to do was really follow their directions. And so I think a lot of times um, in anything, look Uh at people that have done it, people that have done it well, and don't try reinventing the wheel. Try to to take what they have done and apply it. Now, don't copy them, but find out um, why it works. And I always think of more of the strategy side, right? So when people say, you know, how do you how do you start a podcast? What microphone do you use? That's like asking uh, Da Vinci what kind of paintbrush he used. That's not the big thing, right? The right. big thing is what are you trying to accomplish with this? And a lot of times, you know, people will say, you know, should should I be a podcast guest or a podcast host? And I'm like, well, it's like asking, should I be an Uber driver or an Uber passenger? Both of them are great positions, but figure out what what the reason is. So, you know, being a guest is a great way to go out there and get new leads, get known by new people. Mm -hmm. Being a host is a great way to nurture your current leads and nurture your current customers. So with that, you know, if you're trying to nurture current customers and current leads, well, the place to start with the podcast is why are you doing it? What's Mm -hmm. the goal? And then answer the questions, right? Um, there's a, a great book out there. Marcus Sheridan uh, wrote called uh, They Ask, You Answer. Uh-huh. And if you just think about what are your clients asking, give them the answers to that. Uh, what people could they benefit from uh, being introduced to? Um, introduce them to those people. And I think a lot of times people get hung up too much on the technology of it. Um, it's getting easier and easier to do it. And there's more and more people to help. And there's, uh, you know, there's people overseas that you can outsource the production to while you sleep, they'll do it. But the one thing they can't do is, is the content. Um, so focus on that. And that's the most important. Uh, There's so many things that I love that you just said. One, um, the question about what microphone I should use. I get that all the time. And I'm like, whichever one works best for you. (laughs) Like, here are some good ones. Pick one that, but it's got to be relevant to what is important to you. And, and really the most important question is exactly what you said with, you know, what do you want to accomplish with your podcast? It's not the technology or the equipment necessarily. But I think we, 
often we get caught up on the technology and the tactics. Um, I've thought at times that um, my grandfather, God rest his soul, would be better suited for the future than my kids or my grandkids, right? Because he doesn't understand the technology. He would have no idea, but he understands the strategy. So if you told him, how do you grow your business? Well, he grew his business by getting introduced to people from referrals. And he always did that through, you know, going to the, uh, uh, the country club, being a part of the rotary, things like that. If you would have told him, okay, you can go on podcasts, you know, you can talk with people um, and uh, you can talk with thousands Uh of people and you don't even have to put on those funny golf shoes. Um, He'd be like all over that. Right. Absolutely. And the process is important. I think people forget, like they really want to get into the service part of business, but it's the process that allows you to serve more people, whether it's the podcast or anything else. So I think that's such an important point to remind everybody of is have, have a process for your podcast. And I think the, uh, I think process is important there too. And the other thing that's changed in the world is that we have access to so many more customers, right? Right right now um, there are thousands, millions of people that would love to pay you for what you do. The, The biggest problem though, is that they don't know you exist. Right. I think to, uh, today, obscurity is our biggest problem. And Absolutely. this idea of breaking through the noise, to me, that's laughable. Right. Um, the idea that I'm going to yell loud enough to break through Vayner Media or Procter and Gamble or any of the big brands that are spending millions of dollars a day, it's like I'm yelling at a concert. I'm getting hoarse and nobody's hearing me. Uh, I look at it and say, I'd rather get in on the conversations that people are already listening to on podcasts. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And do you have any recommendations for how to stand out in that crowd? Because there are a ton of people starting podcasts now. There are a ton of amazing, great podcasts. And for somebody who wants to start one, but is a little bit unsure of, you know, will I actually develop an audience? Do you have any suggestions for them? Yeah. With that, you know, the idea of you build it and they will come it's not working anymore, right? Right now there are over 900,000 podcasts. Um, That number sounds big, but only of those 250,000 have posted in the last 30 days. So there's still just a quarter of a million podcasts. Um, The back in the days when, if you just put a podcast out there, people would find it. It doesn't happen anymore. So um, if you have an audience, that's a great place to start with the podcast. If you don't have an audience, the best place to find podcast listeners is listening to podcasts. So that's a great strategy is to go out onto other people's shows and talk about yours. It's not a zero sum game, right? The average person, um, the last study I saw was they listened to seven hours of, um, podcasts a week. So if they listen, they're listening to seven hours. I think that number is actually going to go up in the new reality of, of people, um, yeah. uh, you know, listening to more audio content. Uh, so, you know, getting out there, getting seen, I guess even more so getting heard uh, is the way to do that. I would agree. I probably listen to about seven hours of podcasts every week. It's just, and the other, the other okay. thing too is that 70% of podcasts people listen to sped up. So uh, just think, well, why would they want to listen to me for another, you know, half hour of their day? Well, maybe it's not a half hour of their day. Maybe it's, uh, you know, 20 minutes while they're, uh, they're doing yeah. something at home or uh, driving someplace. But I think the way to stand out is, is to be unique and to be yourself. Um, if you try to be a copy of someone else, um, you'll never be as good. And podcasts are really hard to be somebody else on, uh, you know, the, your authenticity is going to come through. And I always joke that when somebody hears me on a, on a podcast interview, there's three reactions they have. Mm-hmm. The first one says, Tom is an idiot. I don't disagree with them. Right. But if that's what they think, we're not going to be good customers, right? God love them. Um, there's somebody else for them. The other ones hear me and like, huh, that's interesting, but it's not for me right now. Maybe they'll share the episode with somebody else. That's great. You know, the ones that you want to talk to are the ones that go, wow, you know, 
Tom understands me. He works with people like me. Interview Valet seems like it's something that could help me. I want to work with them. I, I want to hear more about them. Uh, you know, we're not trying uh, trying to get millions and millions of people. In fact, it's interesting. The, the studies have shown that over the years, the top podcasts have gotten fewer and fewer listeners. So a couple of years ago, the top 1% of podcasts got 54,000 downloads. The most recent year, it was 47,000 downloads. Wow. So if you're, if you're looking and comparing that to Oprah's show, that's really, really small. But right. you think about it, if, if you were talking to a group of people that had chosen to be there for 30 or 45 minutes, most people would be thrilled to talk to 100 and to think there are podcasters that have thousands of people showing up week after week to listen to them. That's amazing. That is amazing. It's truly amazing. And I've seen that with this podcast that when we release on Fridays, like people are listening right away. And, and I'm like, yay, <laughs> it's exciting and super fun. So I want to switch things up a little bit too and talk about like some of the, the challenges that you've had in growing your businesses, because I think that's where as leaders, we have some of the best learning experiences. So can you share something that, um, in, in any number of the experiences that you've had where, you know, at the end of the, the struggle or challenge, you've had a really big aha moment. Uh, unfortunately, I think for me, the aha moment keeps coming over and over. Um, when <laughs> I realize, yeah, you know, when, when I realize uh, the bottleneck is at the top and that the best thing I can do um, to grow my business is to grow my people. Now we were talking about this before. There are certain times um, that you have to go to the, you know, the military style that I learned. Right mm -hmm. when uh, when the house is on fire, we don't take a vote. Uh, we say what we need to do. You have to be decisive. You have to lead. Uh, but in most of the time, a leader should be growing the people below them. Right, just like leading child, uh, raising children. You don't right. want to raise children. You want to raise good functioning adults and, and giving them the, the latitude to, to learn things. Uh, somebody told me in my past business was e-commerce and that was a dream job for a, for a uh, engineer, right? You build it and it just runs with a service-based business. I'd have to say it's been more like raising a child, right? At the very beginning of the business, you have to do everything right? That's, that's just what the role is. And then with time, you start to make progress, but then there's always steps back, right? That right. time where you thought they were potty trained and okay, we regressed here. But at each step, you've got to, to look forward to the next step and also cherish the, the little, little things along the way. And I'm at the point now where the team has grown over the last five years that we've got leaders that I don't have to do everything. I can do, uh, I call myself the chief evangelist officer. Now, that's what <laughs> to me CEO is. Right. And I'm out there evangelizing for uh, our customers, for our company, for our team, mm -hmm. for the industry. Um, and I'm almost, I think, at the point where the business is more like teenagers, right? There are times where they come up to me and say, uh, could I have the keys and could you get out of the driveway so we can we can get going here? And so uh, some people really push back on that. They wish that the company was back in its infancy. And while there were good times there, I think right. you've got to grow with that. And uh, so with all of that, uh, when I see that there's a problem, first thing is there's got to be a problem in our systems, right? There's something broken because these people are trying to to do a great job. And if the process is okay, then the next thing I look at is what am I doing wrong to not let, mm -hmm. not empower the people to do this. And uh, then I look at the people, whereas I think a lot of times the, the gut reaction is why, why aren't they doing this? Right. Right. I totally agree with you. I think from a leader perspective, CEO perspective, person in charge, like you are always accountable. And mm -hmm. if you're not getting results or your team's not getting results, even if there are adjustments that can be made with your team, it's still ultimately you that needs to make the, the shift so that they can make the shift with you. So I'd love to hear that you're saying that. I think that's really important. 
There's a, a, a famous uh, Navy thing that you can delegate responsibility, but you can't delegate accountability. And, um, you know, if, if you want to be the leader, you've got to be accountable for it, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's next for you and Interview Valet? Where, where are your kind of your growth plans, goals? Where would you like to be next? Well, I'm having so much fun with this and it's expanding so much. Right. You know, podcasting has just taken off. We've got a team now of 18. Uh, we're all based remotely. Not everybody wanted to live in Kalamazoo, Michigan with me, right? So, um, and it really worked out very, very well because we serve an international clientele. You know, right. podcasting is not, you know, nine to five East Coast hours unless it snows. And it's given us a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. The talent that we have gotten um, has just been amazing in the team. So we're expanding on that. I think we've got the systems and the processes in place uh, to, you know, 10x the business. Uh, we're staying focused on the three verticals we serve, um, which is business, faith and Christianity, and health, nutrition, and wellness. Uh, but for me personally, I want to do more of being the chief evangelist officer, uh, a lot more speaking, um, a yeah. lot more just showing people what they can do. And, you know, if I can do it from Kalamazoo, Michigan, yes, it really exists. Um, <laughs> You can do it, do it from anywhere because there's so many great businesses, services, products out there that their biggest problem is their obscurity. And uh, we love to help people out with that. Um, you know, our, our mission is to personally introduce inspiring thought leaders to millions of ideal customers they could okay. serve for the betterment of all. And uh, that, that's what we started with and that's what we're going to continue to do. I love it. I love it. So just... Like, let's define thought leaders so that somebody who's thinking, like, maybe I should reach out to Tom can really connect with you. Um, who are you looking to work with? Yeah, it's really what podcast interview marketing works best for is people that want a relationship, not just a transaction. So if you're trying to sell, you know, um, a $10 pair of wired earbuds, um, I don't need to know the company for that, right? Right. I, I, I buy a new pair every two weeks because they keep going through the wash. Um, but if it's somebody that <laughs> it's true, uh, if it's somebody that uh, has a long-term relationship with somebody, so an author that's got a book, but then has a product afterwards, it could be a coaching course. It could be an online course, mm -hmm. a consultant, right? Um, I don't care who makes my, uh, my chiclets, uh, but, if I'm going to work with a, an attorney, if I'm going to work with a consultant, if I'm going to work with the CPA, I want to know their heart. I want to know who they are. It's not just a, a product or a service. And then also companies, right? Um, it's interesting. HubSpot did a study years ago that said about the founder is highly indicative of somebody buying. And I think that's the new, new reality here. Right. I, I don't know who ran Procter & Gamble or Coke, but I tell you what, I know the person behind Apple and HubSpot and Facebook mm -hmm. and all these other companies. So I think there's a really great opportunity for founders and companies to get the words out there. And then finally, speakers, right? Podcasts are digital stages, right? I got my first speaker paid speaking gig from being on a podcast. I had um, talked about it and uh, somebody heard me and said, hey, would you speak at our conference? It's a great try before you buy for speakers. Right. So um, we really look at uh, anybody that's got an inspiring message, wants to help the world and uh, has stories to tell and not just a product to sell. I love it. I love it. Now, excuse me, you have a book, um, that is amazing and super helpful for anybody who is either starting a podcast or has started and wants to ramp up. Can you tell us a little bit about that too? Sure. It's called Podcast Guest Profits, How to Grow Your Business with a Targeted Interview Strategy. And I'll just say, I'm not trying to, to sell it or promote it. It sells well on Amazon, uh, but I give more of them away. And I'd be you know happy to, to give uh, copies away to anybody that's listening here. But uh -huh. before we were talking about secrets and all the rest of this, there's no secrets. This is our process. It's what we do. Um, we just do it with excellence. It's all we do. And people said, um, well, why would you give away all the, all the secrets, you know, the process? And I'm like, 
why does a chef give away the recipes, right? There are right. some people that will say, I want to build or I want to cook this at home. I just look at it and say, I don't want to get a, make a mess at home. Just let me go to the restaurant. And it's yeah. the same thing. If you want to do it yourself, God love you. Use the book. You can get great results with it. But most of our clients are the ones that just say, you know, the best use of my time is to be the guest. And I want you to take care of all the rest. Absolutely. absolutely. I've read your book. I thought it was phenomenal and it is packed full of value. And I still just want to do the interviews. So, <laughs> uh, and it's been great because I do have a team. I have somebody that does the editing, et cetera. And I say, to like most people that I'm talking to that if I had to do the editing for my podcast or the video or anything else, there would never, ever be a podcast. <laughs> so, and it's yeah. wonderful because there are people that just love to do the editing right. that would not be good at the podcasting. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, you know, thank God, God made us all different and we can come together. And uh, to me, I think, you know, this idea of collaboration, yeah. that's the future. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the way to grow incredible teams too. So is I stay in my zone of genius. My, um, the woman that does my editing stays in her zone of genius. We hang out together beautifully and it really makes for a great relationship. And it's, um, it's that, uh, true partnership, true complementary, different skills. Um, and that's one of the things that, that we always look at as we're bringing new people on, you know, yeah. how can we bring more diversity in here? And that helped when we started hiring people in Europe, they had a different way of looking at things, not just, not just time zones, but, uh, uh, you know, different skills, different talents, um, that we all get better from that. Absolutely. I totally agree. Where can people connect with you? Yeah. So, if you go to interview valet with a V.com forward slash tribe of leaders, uh, everything Emmy and I talk about will be there. I'll put all my social media links. You don't have to figure out which Tom Schwab in Kalamazoo I am. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll put a, a um, we've got an assessment. It's a podcast interview marketing success assessment. If you want to see how this would work for you, just go online and you, um, take a, a quiz. It's like 10 questions. It'll give you ideas on how you could really leverage targeted podcast interviews. I'll put a copy of my book, Podcast Guest Profits there. And okay. then if anybody wants to talk with me, um, thinks that we could help them yeah. you know, get out there, it'll all be right there at interview valet.com forward slash tribe of leaders. Awesome. And we will get that link in the show notes too. So you can just scroll down and click. So awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I have loved our conversation. I find your story just so fascinating in, in all of the different twists and turns that you've take, taken and your clear success with interview valet and how you're serving your people. So thank you for being on. Well, thank you, Emmy. And also thank you for what you do. You know, I've been on over 1200 podcast interviews. I still don't have my own podcast because anybody that says doing a podcast is easy has either never done it or never done it well. <laughs> the great ones like you make it look easy. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And to everybody listening, we will see you next week. As an entrepreneur, do you ever feel isolated, like you're just grinding away and not getting to the place or reaching the goals that you want? Maybe you've realized that you just spent days, weeks, or even months trying to accomplish something only to figure out that the answer that you have would have saved you all of that time. I know I've had that experience and my clients have as well. And that's why I created the Tribe of Leaders Biz School. Get the accountability, the training, and the knowledge base in a community of like-minded people who are there to support you. Go ahead and check it out. It's the tribe of leaders.com.